It's time for some morning coffee out in my garden. While taking a walk, I saw these blooming cacti. I really want them for my yard now. You see that dirt all over right here? That's the dang squirrels. They dig in the planters. I don't know what they're looking for. They're not burying anything. There's nothing in there, but they make a mess. I have a couple of bags of the garden soil that I'm going to spread around and then eventually I'm going to put mulch over everything here. But I just wanted to have a little bit of this just because of all the sandy soil. My white daisies here are starting to bloom. So I got my purples and pinks and whites together. This is exactly how I wanted this to come together. It takes a long time to create a perennial garden. Just do it one plant at a time, one step at a time. There was big giant hedges here we had to take out. That was, you know, a lot. Cutting them up, digging them out. It's taken me a long time to even get to this point. You know, when I was watering this this morning, I hit the plant with the hose and the petals were coming off. I'm like, oh no. And I see that one's leaning a little bit. I might have to reposition it and make it straighter. So there's always just little tweaks that you have to do. I think that's why gardeners love gardening is even once things are established, you just go back and you just like take care of and do little things to each plant and inspect the plants. I used to come home from work at my other house and that's the first thing I grabbed. I didn't even get out of my business clothes. I would grab my little clippers and I would go out and I would tend to all of my flowers and plants and I would be pruning, pruning them or inspecting them. It just gave me such joy. Speaking of inspecting plants, this is this flea bane, Philadelphia flea bane, and all of a sudden there's an entire stalk that's dead. So I'm definitely going to clip that off, but eventually I'm going to like dig up this whole plant. For now, I'm just leaving it here for the pollinators. The tire on my car has a slow leak, so I'm going to go take care of that because I have that trip down to Nebraska coming up in a couple weeks here. Um, so when I get back, then I'll do this. So this, these bags are gonna sit here for another few hours. Okay, I got my garden tools. I'm gonna do some pruning today. And I have to confess, these have been sitting out here for two, maybe three days. I'm just now getting to them. That's my garden confession. And that is my way of doing things. I don't try to hurry up and do everything all at once and just overwhelm myself. I want to enjoy my gardening, so I do it on my timeline. Not much to prune. I just want to get this dead branch. I'm not sure what happened to it, but I got to prune this one off. And I think that's about it. If there's any more pruning, I'll let you know. I know it's weird, but I'm letting this here. This is like my marker for where I'm gonna plant the new one in the fall. This is my dead mum that didn't come back. In Pennsylvania, I had no problem with planting mums in the fall, letting them like this, and they would all grow back. Here in Michigan, not one. No, I take that back. Out of the four or five or six that I've had, I've actually only have one that's grown back, 
is actually way over here. This little guy right here is the only mum that grows back and you can see he doesn't grow very big. He doesn't get a lot of sun, so maybe he would grow bigger if he was in another part of the garden, but I just let him there. This little rose bush did so well for her so long. It was just a, you know, a regular little, the miniature roses that you buy in the little pot, like at the grocery store. I got it as a gift. I kept it in the house for a while and then I brought it out and I planted it and it did well. But then this year came out from the winter and it's dead. So I need to pull this out. Now that my irises are all done blooming, except for this little guy right here, I don't think he's going to bloom. I think it's just a bud, an immature bud. But you can cut these stalks off of the plant and just leave the green leaves. Helps to grow the tubers, helps them multiply, all of that. You can also, if you don't want to mess with pruning it twice, is cut the irises down to about there like maybe leave like three four inches and cut everything off and there should be enough green there for it to survive but for right now I think I'm only going to cut the stalks off where it has the spent blooms on it a gardening tip for your irises is if they're not blooming the tubes are the tuber part is buried too deep the other reason why it might not be blooming is it might be an immature plant and it still needs to grow. If you've transplanted them recently, it can take up to two to three years for you to get blooms. You got to be patient. My plan is to open up this bag and kind of put it all into this area and then another bag in the other area. I'm going to skip all of this where the lily of the valley is. There's no reason to put soil in there and I'm going to use this and this to help me sprinkle it around where I want it okay the good news is is I didn't even use a whole bag for what I wanted to do now I do have to get the dirt like off of the leaves of the plants um, I did sprinkle a little bit more water on these even though I just watered them so this bag can go out back. I'm so glad because I thought I'd have to buy a lot more bags to do the other parts of the garden. But I realize now if I'm just sprinkling it around a little bit, just to mix in with that sand. And then um, I, I probably said it about 10 or 15 times now. I got to get mulch and then mulch these beds. But look, it already looks better just with the dark soil. So with the mulch, it'll look really nice. Another reason for clipping off the spent blooms is the plant is still trying to keep this alive. You don't want the energy going into basically the dead part of the plant. So I'm going to cut this one off and there's a few more stalks in here. I'm going to put some more of that miracle Grow potting soil in my raised beds. Maybe a little bit on the side here, although I don't know because there's so many weeds there. You know what? Maybe not. I don't want the weeds to get a boost. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in my raised beds. And then this is my veggie garden. As you know, I pulled out all the irises that were there. So I want to put a little bit around my peppers here and then at some point next year I'll decide what I'm doing there in terms of adding to my vegetable garden. Maybe that would be a good spot for like eggplants. My kale is starting to get big, not ready to harvest yet, but this is one of my favorite things in my garden. And it just keeps growing and growing and it'll continue to grow into the fall so this isn't just summertime and once you start cutting from it like it just keeps growing out the top so you can like cut out from the bottom of it and they'll get super tall and 
I just love it. It's one of my favorite veggies. Put it in the comments. What is your favorite veggie in the garden to grow? Is it tomatoes? Is it peppers? Do you do something unusual? Like herbs? Do you like herbs in your garden? Okay, the bag is empty. I actually like to use these as trash bags. I'm not going to waste it. I'm not just going to throw it in the garbage. I will fill it up with garbage and then throw it out. Over here is where I put all that miracle Grow soil. Now, it's possible that I'm also feeding the weeds. I pulled out a bunch of weeds. There's always more and more of those. But at least my pepper plants, these are my green peppers. These are my Italian red roasting peppers here. At least they will have a little bit more nutrients. Every time I think I'm done pruning, I find more to prune. And today was all about pruning the irises, getting rid of these stalks. So I'm using this plant hanger to kind of prop up my iris, but I want to cut this down as far as I can get it. There's a couple stalks here, so I'm going to come down the hole here. And it's okay to cut some of the leaves, too. You can cut some of the leaves off, and like, like right here is a broken leaf. Oh, I'm going to have to tear that one. Uh, let's see, where's the other one? Down here is this other stalk. Chop. Okay, so let me just get these pulled out of here. Is there anything else? Oh yeah, there was a couple leaves here. Now the other thing I want to do is like move this out of the way for a second. We're gonna move this over here and see what's going on with this iris. Cause like, yeah, these are like leaning down. Oh my goodness, I'm not even showing you what I'm doing. These were like kind of leaning down. I'm kind of going to push them back this way a little bit. That This whole thing is leaning. I'm going to have to get a shovel and kind of level them out a little bit. My Jack Russell realized that she can jump up on this ledge. I had her up on the porch. She just wants down, but she can't jump that far. She would hurt herself. So she's crying for me to come get her. Right, Lola? I grabbed my little hand shovel here. I'm going to try it that way just to dig these up just a little bit and reposition them. Okay, so I slightly repositioned it a little bit. And then I'm moving my plant hanger over here. So now they're kind of separated from each other. But I have more irises out back that i got to prune. I'm going to prune my double bloom peach irises and I will be able to take this string down because I won't need it anymore. And remember to go the whole way down as far as you can get and chop it off like down here. You can even go the whole way to the bottom, the right to the base. Okay. This one's really thick. This is nice and healthy. I love it. But, chop. And the next one, I'm going to get the leaf too. Chop. And over here is the next one. Chop. And there's one more. Chop. Okay, that was quick and easy. Thanks for watching.